If you actually know a little bit of algebra and basic math, well, you should be able to solve this problem. So here is the equation. We have 1 over 12 to the 2x power is equal to 12. But we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 1, B is 2, C is negative 1 half, and D is 4. And these are all possible solutions for x because we're trying to solve this equation here for this variable x. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you how easy it is to get this problem right and then, of course, how to solve this equation. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we're trying to solve this equation for x. And here are the possible answers. So try not to overthink this because if you give yourself enough time with this question, I can almost guarantee you that you will get the right answer. Okay, so the correct answer here is C, negative one half, because these other answers just don't work. Now, what am I talking about? Well, again, we're trying to solve this equation for X. So what is X equal to? Well, if X equals any one of these numbers, meaning one, two, or four, it's impossible to have a true equation. So an equation in algebra is indicating that the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side in value. So this uh, expression right here on the left-hand side of the equation, one over 12 to the two X power must be equal to 12. So what we're trying to do is find the value of x to make this entire thing a 12 because 12 is equal to 12. Now, why does uh, 1, 2, and 4 not work? Well, let's go ahead and plug those values in for x and just see what happens. Okay, so if x was equal to 1, we would replace this x with 1. So we would have 1 over 12 to the 2 times 1 power or 1 over 12 squared. And of course, that is going to be equal to 1 over 12 squared, which is 144. So one, 1 over 144 is not equal to 12, okay? So obviously, 1 is not going to work. But if we throw a 2 in here for x, all we're going to do is make this exponent bigger and this number down here in the denominator larger. So this is not going to work. And of course, uh, D will not work as well. So by default, the only possible answer here is C, negative 1 half. But uh, let's suppose we didn't have a multiple choice question and we just simply wanted to solve this equation. So what do we need to do to solve this equation? Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. Okay, now the first thing that we need to understand about this equation is that it is an exponential equation. We're trying to solve for this variable x in the exponent spot. So let's take a look at this simple example. If I had two to the x power is equal to 12, well, I'm trying to solve for the variable in the exponent location of this power. So this is an exponential equation and typically we need to use things called logarithms to solve these types of equations. But not all the time, it depends on the equation. And in this particular equation, we can kind of get around using logarithms because we have a 12 to some power, 2x power, but we also have a 12 on the other side of the equation to the first power. So what we want to do here is use some properties of powers and exponents to equate two powers of 12. So in other words, we're going to have 12 to something is going to be equal to 12 to the first power. So we're going to have to use some properties of powers and exponents to rewrite this expression so it's something more like this. And then, of course, we can easily solve this equation. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just one second. 
Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely got to check out my full courses. Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem. And don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So what we want to do here is turn this equation into something like this situation. So if I had an equation 12 to the x power is equal to 12 to the third power, well, what's the solution to this equation? Well, this value cannot be equal to this value unless these exponents are exactly the same because the bases are the same. Okay, so if I have 12 to some power and it's equal to 12 to the third power, well, we can easily see here that x must be equal to 3. Now, what we want to do, again, is uh, change this expression such that we have a kind of a situation like this. All right, so we're going to have to get into some properties of powers and exponents. Now we're talking about basic algebra, and this is the property that we need to thoroughly understand, and it is the principle or property that involves negative exponents. So the rule in algebra goes something like this, a to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the n. So we're going to thoroughly review this uh, property and then apply it in this equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So again, this is a property which is effectively like a law that we can easily follow. And uh, to do this, we simply just follow the pattern. So if we have a power to a negative exponent, we can write this as 1 over the power in the denominator, but now the power has a positive exponent. Okay, so we're simply going to follow the pattern. So if we had x to the negative 2 power, this is going to be equal to 1 over x squared. So notice we went from negative to positive. Okay, so again, this rule is not that complicated, but I'm going to show you an easier way to think of this property because a lot of students get confused with this property. You'll see what I'm talking about in just one second. But uh, this works with numbers as well, any power situation. So again, we have uh, the negative exponent property. So if I have 3 to the negative 2 power, this is going to be equal to 1 over 3 squared. So if you understand the rule so far, that is fantastic. And now let's take a look at uh, a little bit more difficult examples involving negative exponents. So let's talk about what to do with a situation like this. So here I have 1 over x to the negative 2 power. So how do I simplify this expression? Because I have a negative exponent down here in the denominator. So what we're going to do is still apply this property, but uh, we're going to apply it to this part down here, this x to the negative 2. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So 1 over x to the negative 2 is going to be equal to 1 over, now this x to the negative 2, I can write this way, 1 over x squared. So now I have a big complex fraction. Okay, so let's continue to simplify this. So again, 1 uh, over x to the negative 2 power is equal to 1 over 1 over x squared. Now I'm just kind of putting this in parentheses because we have a complex fraction. So to simplify this, I can think of this this way. So I have 1 being divided by 1 over x squared. So now we need to think about how to divide fractions. So we can, again, we have 1 divided by 1 over x squared. So we need to turn this into multiplication and flip this fraction, right? So we're just talking about uh, basic fraction operations. So we're going to flip this upside down. So this is going to be x squared over 1. So we're going to end up with... 1 times x squared. Okay, so 1 over x to the negative 2 power turned out to be equal to x squared. Now, let's just kind of take a look at this right here because I'm going to show you a real easy way to think about negative exponents. And that is the following. So anytime we want to take a power and have the sign of the exponent different, so in other words, let's suppose I have x squared, and I want to write that as x to the negative 2 power, or if I have x to the negative 2 power, and I want to write this as x squared. So anytime I want to change the sign 
of a power. All I have to do is pick up this power and put it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So here I have 1 over x to the negative 2, and this x to the negative 2 is in the denominator. So if I just pick this entire thing up and put this x squared up in the numerator, the sign is going to go from negative to positive. So right here, uh, x squared is really x squared over 1. Okay, so if you can kind of remember this, it's going to make this negative exponent property a lot easier. Let's take a look at one more example before we get back into our problem. So here we have x to the negative 3 over y to the fourth power. So how can we write this problem without negative exponents? So what we can do here is simply just take this entire power here and put it down in the denominator. So that's going to leave me with 1 over x cubed times y to the fourth power. So anytime you uh, move something, there's nothing left in your fraction. There's always a 1. So I can write this expression this way. But there's another way I can write this expression. Okay, matter, matter of fact, there's uh, multiple different ways. I can take this y to the fourth and put it up in the numerator. So this is also equal to x to the negative 3 times y to the negative fourth power. So again, just remember, anytime you want to change the sign of the exponent, just take the entire power and put it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. Okay, so if you understand this property, and hopefully you do, if I did a pretty good job explaining it, well, we can use this property to easily solve this equation. All right, so back to our problem. And again, what we're trying to do is get this equation to look more like this, right? So we're trying to uh, write uh, these powers such that they both have a base of 12. Okay, so this side over here, the right-hand side of the equation already has a base of 12, but this is really 12 to the first power. So what I want to do is use uh, the properties of powers and exponents, and of course uh, this property I just went over, to rewrite this expression so it's more like this, because this is going to be the key to solving this equation. So let's see if you can figure this out. Okay, so what we want to do is get rid of this uh, fraction. Okay, so we want to write this entire thing up in the numerator. Okay, so that is a bit of a clue. And how do we do that? Well, all we're going to do is change the sign of this exponent. Okay, so instead of 1 over 12 to the 2x power, this is equal to 12 to the negative 2x power over 1, right? So I just picked up this entire power and put it up in the numerator, and this is going to go from positive to negative. Now, if you understand this, well, the rest of the algebra is going to be super easy because I have 12 to the negative 2x, and this is equal to 12 or 12 to the first power. Okay, so now comes the easy part because we have 12 to the negative 2x is equal to 12 or 12 to the first power. So if this is equal to this, well, the exponents must be equal because the bases are the same. So in other words, if I said I have 12 to some power is equal to 12 to the third power, well, in order for this to be true, this exponent over here has to be 3. So that means that negative 2x is equal to 1. All right, so to solve this basic algebraic equation, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. So our final answer is x is equal to negative 1 half. Now, if you understand all this algebra, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and an A+. Plus. Now, if you need help in solving algebraic equations, uh, particularly exponential equations, well, this is a kind of real easy example of an exponential equation. Typically, you're going to need to use logarithms. So if you ever wondered what that LOG button and that LN button uh, do on your calculator, well, they solve these types of equations, okay? So we got lucky here that uh, both sides of the equation had a base 12. But if we had something more interesting, like let's say uh, 2x is equal to 9, well, you're going to have to use logarithms to solve this type of equation. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, 
or more advanced math or geometry, basic math, whatever you need help with in terms of mathematics, check out all the different uh, courses I have to offer. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.